Chris, we're, we're uh, reversing roles simply because we have been talking about an area that is uh, quintessentially what you do, which is you know, making people feel comfortable, making people feel that they are home. And this is a continuation of our uh, topic regarding how to make, it, uh, our, to make our colleges an inviting environment. So our, today's uh, topic of conversation is how to implement that welcoming environment. Yeah, Zahi, and I, I think one of the ways that it, it starts with is, you know, thinking a little bit about like how you would want to be treated. Um, you know, th this is all to me very much like basic customer service, which Again, I, I, I am very cognizant of the fact that there are people in higher education, when they hear the term customer service, like they get the ick right away. They, they don't want to think of us as, you know, a, a product that we're selling. But in, in a sense, that's that's part of it. But, you know, from the top down. So if you were a student, you know, put yourself in a student's shoes you're 18 years old, you're away at college for the first time, you're on your own for the first time. Do you want people just coldly telling you, oh, well, you know, you're trying to pay a bill, you came to financial aid, you need to go somewhere else. Uh, is that what you want? No. Um, you know, do you want somebody blindly pointing down a hall and saying, oh yeah, room 103 is down that way? Um, no, not really. Uh, from the employee side, uh, and I alluded to this in, in a previous episode, um, you know, we, we have a lot of paperwork when we do things. Uh, you know, we like have to fill out paperwork just to get a pen in a lot of cases. And, you know, if you do that paperwork incorrectly, do you want somebody that is just going to be like, you need to fill out form 397B differently and leave it at that. Um, no, I mean, you, you want somebody that is going to be a human being and, and help you with these things. Now, you know, I, I'm not by any means saying that, that we need to go the route where you have to be smiling every minute you're in the office and, and all of that, but you know, you have to be willing to help people out. Uh, none of us are too busy to help a student find where they need to go. Uh, in student services, for example, again, that warm handoff, that idea that, that we're going to take you from point A to point B and, and help you get there and, and give you that handoff instead of, you know, go to the bursar's office. Uh, so all of those things are really important. And I mean, frankly, those things generally are going to be free to implement. Uh, you know, there's nothing about that that's going to cost money. For our instructors, it's, it's you know, that getting to know students and, you know, really things like getting to know their names. Like, we shouldn't have to say that, right? We shouldn't have to go in and say, hey, professors, learn the names of your students, and at the community college level, that's generally easy because we tend to have smaller class sizes. Larger universities, uh, you may be getting into more of those auditorium style classes where that does become a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, the idea where we're getting to know our students, but not just by name. You know, let, let's let's go beyond just the, oh, yeah, you're Zahi and you're in my class. You know, let's let's take it to that next level and find out um, why you're in that class, what you're hoping to do, where you're hoping to go, uh, because I may be able to help you or I may know somebody that can help you and I can make that connection for you. And, and those things are incredibly important for our students. Indeed, as you're speaking, I was I was thinking to myself, all of us that work in colleges, in my opinion, should move away from thinking that it's a job to believing that it is an identity. And once we identify with the place, it's not just the sense of ownership, but it's the sense of partnership. 
and, and we only have one job, right? And that's the student. So, and Zahi wouldn't be Zahi if he doesn't talk about the fact that our schedules and modalities are a big part of making our space welcome. Having on-demand and in-time support for the students is also being a welcoming space. I mean, go online and talk to a tutor. How is that helpful, right? Um, in, in, our, in our syllabi, so many of them are punitive, absolutely punitive. I understand that we have to have policies and procedures. I get it. I am not saying it should be willy-nilly. But our syllabi, some of us are absolutely Attila the Hun. How is that? How is that something that's going to make the student feel welcome? I just heard about the faculty of, who, if you don't submit an assignment on time, you have received a failing grade for the class, irrespective of your uh, work uh, over the entire term. How is that learning? How is that a measurement and a rewarding of the learning? I mean, you know, I've even I've read about faculty that uh, have punished a student for late work when it's turned in uh, right before the deadline, not after the deadline. You know, so maybe you had a deadline. Yeah. Like, you know, hey, this was due at 1159. I'm going to penalize you because you turned it in at 1150, because that clearly shows you were probably procrastinating. And, you know, like, it doesn't make sense to me that, you know, you would do something like that. Um, and, I don't, you know, it, it's absurd ahead. because each and every one of us, you know, have had once or in my case, many times where we're running to the post office, we're running it to the wire. Right. Do we want them to close one minute before or do you do we want them to be open five minutes after the time? Right. So I, uh, there's a problem there. And, yeah. and, and, and if we take it, you know, I like what you talked about uh, earlier uh, about it involves everybody. I like that idea. It's true. We're all in it together. Absolutely. And, you know, so and, and I think some of this, too, at, at the faculty and staff level institutionally, um, you know, it's about creating a welcoming area for them as well. And, uh, you know, some of that is, is going to be, you know, making sure that the training is there that you need to do your job. Uh, it, it's, it's encouraging professional development opportunities. Uh, you know, we, we want our people to go to, you know, conferences and whatever else they can find out there to continue to grow and get better. And, you know, as budgets shrink, that those professional do development dollars often shrink up quickly with them. Uh, but, you know, also it, it's, you know, talking about making sure this culture is, you know, permeated through, through everything. So again, it is that, you know, making sure that if I need to, you know, have, the O&M team come and do something for me. I'm not going to get grumped at because I didn't do it the right way. I didn't ask the right way or, you know, whatever. Or, um, you know, again, understanding a little bit about why we do things the way we do and, and also being open to, to some change as well. Uh, that, you know, hey, why, why is it that I need to fill out this form in triplicate when I literally see you shred one of those as soon as I hand it to you. Uh, you know, things like that, like how, how do we change those sorts of things to make it more, more welcoming? And I mean, it's such a cliche everywhere right now that, you know, oh, we're a family. Um, and, you know, like sometimes that's used in a very toxic way, right? Uh, and that's certainly not what I'm advocating for, because you are going to have people that, regardless, you don't like working with. Um, you have to be able to work with them, but you don't have to be friends with them. And that's okay. 
but let's let's set up something where it's a good positive working environment where everybody is happy and and they want to be happy there they want to make working at our college uh you know a passion and a calling and then they want to pass that on to our our students and our community yeah just we do things and we're regimented in them right we work in terms, right? We've got registration days, we've got start of term, census, midterm, and so on. Uh, nobody understands them, right? They look at us and all of education, oh, you only work nine months a year. So why would they understand us if the way we portray ourselves is like we're automatons and, and, you know, we, we just work within those boxes as opposed to the fluidity of the businesses outside. Nobody goes Amazon and, and, and Target and Walmart have distribution centers and, and trucking and they, nobody thinks about that, right? They think that I'm going to the store. Oh, I, I found what I was looking for. Oh, they don't have it today. I'll come back. So... But at colleges, we're all super busy telling people how busy we are and, and that they shouldn't bother us. And, and we shut down our, our window because we can't be close to students. And, and uh, we don't take credit cards. We only take uh, the cash. And, and if you don't carry cash, well, go to the ATM machine and pay uh, uh, fees on it. And, mm. Yeah, I, I would say some of the things that happen at colleges would be, be as absurd as going to the grocery store trying to buy eggs, and they're like, oh, we only sell eggs on Mondays. They're out there all the time, but we only sell that we, we can't allow you to buy eggs on any day but Monday. And, you know, sometimes we do get really caught up in in that sort of thing, and it's it's not you know, it's not a healthy, sustainable way to to run an operation. So, um, Zahi, I'm going to close this up, even though you opened us up. Go, go uh, for it, been... because if you keep me talking, it's it's going to be even more sad. <laughs> We've been talking about creating a welcoming campus. I think this has been a great series. So be sure and check out our previous uh, two episodes on this topic if you haven't yet. Uh, if you enjoy this kind of conversation, be sure and uh, subscribe to us here on YouTube. Ring the bell down below. You'll get notified when we post new content. And, of course, you can find Let's Talk Ed on all of your favorite podcasting platforms as well. So for Dr. Zahi Atala, I'm Chris Ford. We'll see you next time right here on Let's Talk Ed.